I couldn't like celebrate Hibs beating Hearts because I was that depressed. And that's how I think that was one of the signals where like I really needed to do something about this. Currently, um, I feel really good mentally, um, but it's not always been like that. And I think the thing that caught me out was um, I wasn't expecting to feel as bad as I did. Um, it's, and it was hard to pinpoint exactly what made me feel um, depressed and low and took me to like um, feel suicidal as well. So it was difficult to say what caused it, which made it difficult to work out how I could then come back from that, if that makes sense. Um, and it was like a journey for years to get to where I am now, but it probably took me years to get to where I was at that point as well. For myself, I didn't realise it was a, I had a mental health issue. It was more a physical health issue um, that I first had. Um, I was like feeling faint quite a lot. I found it difficult to concentrate. I couldn't like walk from A to B. Um, and if I did, I couldn't remember how I got from A to B. And I would have to say to my manager, like, can I go home? I feel faint, which is quite, again, for a man, I felt quite, like, ashamed to admit that. I just didn't feel right. And it felt like I was drunk, but I hadn't actually been drinking. I was just like, I wasn't really there. And uh, I was going to the doctors and they were saying, come back in when you feel like that. I was going back in and they were like, we've taken tests, we can't work out anything. Um, while that was going on, um, there was an incident where Bolton were playing Tottenham Hotspurs in a game and one of the Bolton players collapsed, Fabrice Mwamba, and he died. And I think he was like clinically dead for like 70 minutes or something. It was an unbelievable story. And the following week after that, I just sat in my work and I just like consumed everything about that. Internet, newspapers, everything that I could. And like, I just couldn't stop crying. So I went back to the doctors for a checkup. And they were like, how are you being? I says, well, well, I still get these episodes where I like, I feel like faint, can't work out what it is. And then I was like, and a really strange thing as well is like the other day, like told her the story, football player collapsed. I was in floods of tears. And I was like, I'm not even a Bolton fan, so I don't know why that is. And then she says to me, and I'll never forget, she says, Mr. Renton, have you ever considered that you're depressed? And I was like, I'm not depressed. I'm the life and soul of the party. I'll be the first one in the pub, the last one to leave cracking a joke every line is like a one-liner so that's definitely not me uh, I like my indie music so I've listened, I can listen to like Joy Division Radiohead like depressing artists and that but I'm not depressed and then that's when it was like maybe I am I think I was in denial um, because there wasn't like anything that um, set it off anything that triggered it I um, came from a loving family well supported, life and soul of the party. So it wasn't like, and I, had, I didn't have an excuse to do that. So I really found it difficult to like appreciate that I would have been suffering mentally. I think um, because I was male, I didn't appreciate how to like express myself. I didn't feel like safe and confident enough to do so. So it was a struggle to be open and honest with others, be it like um, a wife, family, um, medical, um, people, um, work, friends and, and colleagues as well. So it was difficult to do that. And you're always wor worried that you're going to be judged. People are going to look at you differently. And then you go from like a very sort of like masculine um, like perception to one which is maybe unfairly like feminine, you know, which is unfair to say that because now I'm like a lot more like in tune with my emotions and like I'll openly cry and things like that, not just when Hibs cause me to cry when we get beat on a regular basis. But it, and it's good to have that like emotional out, output, I think, whereas before I would never have done that because you'd be scared of how people react and then that would make you feel worse. And also um, in the way that men are maybe like comparing themselves to others. So like footballers, musicians, business people as well, and comparing themselves to each other, which is unfair because then those people are probably comparing themselves to others as well and nobody's getting anywhere because of that. What's motivated me would be, I remember what it was like when I was down. I remember what it was like when I was like suicidal and I had nowhere else to go. Nothing to do, no matter, like loving family, um, friends, best on the earth. I just felt like there was nothing else that I could do. So what's motivated me would be, I, I take for any anybody to be in that position I was in. I could see it like an edge that I was running towards and everything that would come up an obstacle. So like my family would be like a wall, but I could smash through that 
Um, and other things that I was thinking of, like um, friends and that, um, they were maybe like barbed wire that I could like jump over. There was nothing like stopping me getting towards that edge. And I just remember like it was like, Thursday or a Friday night and I thought, and I really at this point, I need to say something because that's it. If not, then that's me gone. And I just remember saying to my wife, because I wanted a big speech and I wanted it to be, because I like writing and being creative and that as well. I wanted it to be like poignant and like memorable. And I just says to, to my wife, I'm struggling. And that was the two words and that's all it took. And that was that. And then I just spoke at her for like probably an hour and a half. But it feel, felt like I was speaking to her for maybe like two minutes. The start of uh, my recovery was finding somebody um, that heard me and was able to listen, be it my wife. And then by speaking to my wife and being honest with her, it took away a lot of the stigma because then I wasn't, I didn't feel judged. I felt supported. And it gave me the confidence to speak to others, um, like medical professionals, um, again, work colleagues, friends and that as well. And it changed people's perception and it made them like appreciate what I was going through. So as opposed to being, I could still be like the joker. I could still have a laugh. Um, and I could still like go to the pub, but then people were more understanding if I didn't go, you know, checking in on me to make sure I'm okay. Um, but it goes to an interesting point where you never talk about, to know I feel like I never stopped talking about, it, but it's good that way and I think it, it can make it more relatable. So being a volunteer at the changing room, which helps men tackle mental health through football, you see that it's like, if people can relate to that, it's not like a celebrity fad or it's not something which affects someone else, um, somewhere else in the world. It, it affects people, you know, where it, it can affect you, it can affect anybody, and if it's affecting like a family member, then it affects you indirectly, directly as well. So it, it was, um, it was good just to like now talk about it, and then I think people can see as well there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's probably like a cliche and stuff like that that you'd get on a poster, but it is true. It is true by talking about that. It's like the the biggest, the most important thing I ever did. Football's an interesting part of my mental health. Um, and I, like at the point where I was like at my lowest for a period of maybe like nine months, for instance, I was I was out with my son, um, and Hibs were playing our rivals Hearts at Tynecastle, um, and I was out with my son. Came back and Hibs had beaten Hearts two one, which was like a, a big achievement. That's like something we're celebrating. And I just remember that at that point. I wasn't like sitting on the sofa. I was like felt like the sofa. So my legs were like the bottom of the sofa. The top of my legs were like the seat. My back was on the back of the sofa. I just felt like a sofa. I couldn't move, couldn't move. My wife was looking at me saying like, I remember like Derby days, I would be like taking you to your pals at like eight in the morning. You'd be coming in at like eight the following morning, like win, lose or draw. And she was like, that hips have beat hearts, 2-1. Your pals are like up the town just now. You should go for it. And I was like, I just can't, I can't. And I think it was a strange thing to like equate at that point. I couldn't like celebrate Hibs beating hearts because I was that depressed. And that's how I think that was one of the signals where like I really needed to do something about this. It makes you realise as well, I've, like I've, I'm in tune now more, whereas like I used to take results quite personally, but I can't like, I can support Hibs, come along, cheer them on, buy a season ticket, buy a pie, buy a t-shirt, and I can support them that way. But as before, if they got beat, I would take it like personally, but I, I'll let that go. If they win, it's brilliant. If they lose, on to the next game. And I think that's like a big a big factor now, which I'm more like in tune with. It, it's difficult. I think I always find it difficult to, to control things that you couldn't control. Not that I'm a controlling individual, but like control your emotions for like, I, I can't control how, how like if Hibs win or that. I, I can't control the weather, although I'd love to in Scotland. But it's a thing. So if I can't control it, what can I do? Um, well, I can control making arrangements to see my friends before it, going out with my son after it. The weather's bad. I can then do things like go to the cinema instead. So it's learning to adapt in that way and, and rolling with the punches, but not manning up or anything, which is a bad, like a really bad thing to say. But it's, um, but yeah, no, it's good. It's good. So well, it's helped me. I appreciate more that there's more to life than football, although football's helped me get where I am. So to look after my mental health, and it, it probably sounds quite um, quite silly, but I'll have a routine. So it's every day I'll do things like meditate in the morning, um, read the news, listen to music as well. I've got like a Game Boy, so I'll play Tetris. Um, I'll contact people, check in on them and that as well. And I'll also have other things that I'll do like ad hoc. So by doing having that routine, it's like a foundation for which like I know what I need to do. 
I'll do that and there's like a sense of accomplishment as well. So things like that and it's like looking after your physical, your mental health, treating it like your physical health, which I don't think we've probably done enough. And it's maybe now over the last like say 15 years that we're appreciating that you need to look after your mind just as much as your body as well. So it's having that routine but not being too hard on yourself as well. There'll be days that I have bad days and I can recognise it. So it's something that I work on like on a regular basis. I would say to any man that's struggling, please talk about it. It's a fight for which many people are going through and it's a fight that you can, um, you can face those challenges with the help of others. And what I found was from my own experience is how supportive people were and how much, or how I didn't actually realise how much support I needed until they were able to help me. And even like people checking in on me, you know, like randomly and that, just to see how I'm getting on or that. Um, but, and, and that's the big thing. And um, just being open and honest about it as well. It's like, you're not going to, you're not going to lose any friends. Um, Work-wise, I think a lot of workplaces are more in tune with that as well. And, and there's not a case of feeling like unmasculine about it. That I think that people need to appreciate that. And there is now, every day there's like less of a stigma with mental health than what they were doing before.